Welcome to another episode of Bitcoin Tech Talk. This is issue number 245 and the title is Inflation is Here. As usual, the uh, newsletter can be found at jimmysong.substack.com and it is delivered to your inbox every Monday when you sign up. Anyway, here is this week's uh, story. Inflation is here. Bitcoin Tech Talk number 245. The past year has seen a lot of monetary expansion. Not only were there stimulus checks, but also all sorts of forgivable loans, generous unemployment, and bailouts of all types, ostensibly to keep the economy going. Yet despite what seemed like desperate economic circumstances, help, sign, uh, help wanted signs are everywhere, nobody can seem to hire enough people, and there are shortages everywhere you look. In other words, inflation is here, and even the government is having to acknowledge the increase in prices. To be sure, asset inflation has been obvious since early the last year when stock prices kept going up despite the economy coming to a grinding halt due to shutdowns. Real estate prices have been particularly inflationary, with shortages showing up in many markets and buyers having to put in bids way above asking just to be considered. Yet it's now trickling down to stuff like cars and food. We've seen meat prices almost double in the past year, and used cars are up 30% from uh, the year before. The government has been trying to blame everything but monetary expansion, including manufacturers that didn't adequately prepare and hoarders of various stripes. But inflation is always and everywhere a monetary phenomenon. At some point, there is going to be a reckoning. What's strange about the current state of the world is that very few people seem to be preparing to handle the reckoning. Everyone seems to be going along and riding the wave of money printing without much thought to the future. It is in this context that the current mini bear market in Bitcoin makes little sense. There's more reason than ever to buy Bitcoin, yet the price continues to sag. What looks to be the best vehicle to hedge against uh, inflation languages because energy fud, China, Elon. There's wool pulled over the collective eyes of people that really ought to know better. But then again, this sort of lull is normal for any emerging consensus. A lot of people haven't suffered enough to be desperate enough to really have learned their lessons. There's simply too much free money going around for people to take inflation seriously. Yet the time is coming when inflation is really going to hit home and a lot more people are going to suffer. And that will be the time for Bitcoin. Just sucks that it will take suffering for people to really learn. So um, I wrote this, uh, you know, over the weekend um, and Bitcoin price has fallen even further. Um, but it, it, the thing that's really interesting to me is that everybody, I think, kind of acknowledges that inflation is happening and yet they aren't preparing for it very well. Um, a, a lot of people seem to be just sort of um, letting things keep going on. I, I, I'm hearing right now, for example, Disneyland is, uh, or Disney World is chock full because, you know, families are using stimulus checks to go to Disney World instead of, uh, you know, saving up or preparing for the future. Um, it It's really high time preference behavior that, seems to be driving this economy and very few people seem that concerned about the future uh, and that's very very strange to me but it's reflected in the price of bitcoin and what's going on um uh in uh in the entire economy really <coughs> all right let's talk about bitcoin fake ledger devices are getting mailed out to the people whose address info was leaked by ledger if we receive an unsolicited ledger device, please be aware that any Bitcoin put on them will likely be stolen in short order. The devices are currently compromised and an attempt to steal a Bitcoin. Hackers are putting more money and time into these types of hacks, and this is why it's it's very important to get devices straight from the manufacturer. So uh, there was a ledger hack a while back where um, you know customer information was... Uh, leaked out on the dark web and so on. Um, so apparently there's uh, somebody that's bothering to mail out compromised ledger devices to these folks uh, and hoping that they get used and using uh, and then maybe perhaps 
using uh, you know the compromise seeds uh, a, a, as a way to uh, get some Bitcoin. Um, sadly, I think it will probably be like a profitable venture for those people, um, though it's highly, highly immoral. Casa has an update to its Covenant product that makes inheritance easier. The approach is different than their previous multi-sig setup in that a designated beneficiary gets control of the Bitcoin after your death. For some, this is likely to make the process simpler, though it does open up the possibility of getting screwed out of your funds should things go wrong. That said, this is a more natural method of estate planning than a multi-sig scheme, which by nature, which is by nature somewhat adversarial. So I think that they're listening to the market. There are people that um, just want a simple estate planning thing for their Bitcoin. And, uh, and you know, multi-sig is a lot more secure um but you know basically these people uh for for a lot of people they have somebody that they trust already uh, and they're not going to get screwed in some weird uh manner by you know the person being motivated to kill them or something like that most people don't work that way um so it, it makes sense that a product of this type um it now exists uh instead of you know, everything has to be like three of five or something to that effect. Michael Flaxman has a proposal for blind expubs. The idea is to have a multi-sig setup where one party holds a key without knowing exactly where it is. The ostensible idea is to hide the amount being stored from the holder of the key until the moment when their key is needed. As the example makes clear, it could be a two of three where the third key is kept by someone who's technically competent but does not have the path as to be able to know how much is being secured, nor the other keys involved. It's reminiscent of a blind oracle type setup and one worth looking at. Um, yeah, uh, uh, this is something that, uh, that Michael's been wanting for a while, which is a multi-sig setup where... Um, yeah, you know, he trusts his family or he wants the bitcoins to go to say his family uh but they're not necessarily technically competent enough to be able to figure everything out uh so in case of his death uh he has a blind ex pub to one of his friends that he doesn't necessarily want um them to know how much he has but would be okay in the event of death or something to that effect so that's what a blinded ex pub is for there's a repository of interesting problems in Bitcoin to research. These include various open lightning questions and possible attacks that haven't found a good mitigation. For academics, there's a gold mine of possible types, uh, topics to write papers on that will have real world consequences. Um, so interesting uh, research problems for academics out there. Uh, let's talk about Lightning. Bitstamp has integrated Zebedee. Zebedee is an interesting partner in that they're focused almost exclusively on Lightning payments and gaming. Esports is growing like crazy all over the world, and Lightning introduces new mechanics to gaming that seem very promising. Bitstamp is going to be uh, going a bit outside their comfort zone in integrating this, as they're known to be an exchange, but this very well may be an area of uh, area to grow towards. Um, so Zebedee is this lightning um, integrated gaming service uh, and it looks like uh, Bitstamp is uh, integrating with them. There is probably a significant overlap between Bitcoin holders and gamers um, and if there's uh, some way to do <coughs> some integration there uh, it might make sense. So you know this seems outside of their uh, area of expertise, but it makes sense. Lightning Labs newsletter talks about lightning ubiquity in Miami. Not only did we see people on stage use lightning to transfer money instantly, but we saw all sorts of vendors integrate lightning for all sorts of things like the eSports tournament I mentioned above. The conference really seems to have shown lightning's true capabilities and adoption seems to have really turned the corner. Anecdotally, I've noticed a lot more demand for lightning payments as the casual way for people to pay Bitcoin. And, um, you know, I, 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 I like doing that. I like getting paid or paying in lightning because it is faster. And, um, yeah, the, the user experience is so much better. Uh, well, we'll, we'll see if uh, the, this continues to develop, uh, especially at future conferences. 
Thomas M reports that lightning capacity has hit all-time highs. Nodes are du double the number of what they were a year ago, and the number of channels are up more than 50%. There's 60% more bit Bitcoin locked up in lightning as the El Salvador news looks to supercharge the next wave of adoption. Um, all of the lightning statistics are going up um, and up and to the right. A lot more nodes, a lot more uh, Bitcoin in there, a lot more channels. Um, and it, it really does seem to be turning a corner. There's also stuff like uh, Sphinx Chat and Breeze podcasting and, and, and things of that nature. Um, and I expect this to continue to grow. <coughs> Zach Vowell has an excellent summary of Bitcoin mining in Iran. It's surprising that almost 4% of all Bitcoin hash rate currently resides in that country. Yet, in a sense, uh, necessity may be the mother of invention here as they continue to suffer heavily from international sanctions. Um, so something like 4% of all Bitcoin hash rate is currently in Iran and they are um, using Bitcoin for a lot of international trade that they wouldn't otherwise be able to do. Uh, it's a fascinating study on necessity being the mother of invention because you, you don't necessarily think of Iran as like a big, um, you know, Bitcoin innovator, but they're kind of forced to be because of international sanctions. Seb Bunny explains how the current system of dollars is very deceitful. The article is more about the current fiat-induced inflationary system and its harmful effects in the entire economy. The malinvestment inherent to inflation is explored and the harm to innovation as well. The case for Bitcoin in this context is much easier to see and is therefore a good way to introduce people to the harm of the current system to introduce them to Bitcoin. And I, I, I really do think that this is the correct or uh, much more conducive way to get people into Bitcoin it isn't necessarily talking about Bitcoin per se. It's much more about the current system and how unfair it is um, and all of the consequences, uh, including malinvestment, which is uh, which figures so prominently in the world today. Um, and then only after understanding the problems of the current system are people really that uh, much more open to Bitcoin. Alan Farrington reflects on Miami. The post reflects on quite a bit, but the main thing I got out of it uh, uh, is that Bitcoiners care. They care about stuff and of ultimately what make, uh, and that's what ultimately makes them different. He argues that this is ultimately why Bitcoiners will win. I can't say I disagree with him. In a world where you have passionate go-getters versus apathetic rent seekers, guess who has an insurmountable advantage? Um, and, you know, the, the, this is why Bitcoin continues to make waves, despite, uh, you know, the very small numbers, relatively speaking to the fiat system, is that, you know, you, you have people that that are essentially the intolerant minority and uh, uh, we're a lot stronger than people that really don't care that much and are really rent seeking and don't have sort of like that moral impetus behind them. Uh, they, they know that what they're doing is uh, sucking things dry from the system. Inflation continues unabated. What's crazy is that the CPI is a heavily manipulated metric and it's so out of whack that they can't seem to fudge the numbers enough to bring it to heel. The hedonic adjustments apparently don't have enough wiggle room for the inflation that we're experiencing. Uh, the reality of the price increases are simply too big to be papered over and we're likely to see high inflation numbers for quite some time. And this is, um, you know, something that's kind of shocking to me, honestly, that they can't fudge the numbers because they've been doing that for so long. Uh, but, you know, the prices are just getting so kind of crazy that even the CPI, um, they're having to say, well, it's not going to be 2%. It's probably going to be more like 4 or 5%. Uh, both numbers are lies. Uh, I mean, it's probably closer to 20 or 30 percent, but, you know, <laughs> they're not going to admit that. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, they're, they're having to admit at least something because the prices are going so crazy. Nick Gillespie sat down with Cynthia Lummis to talk about why she's all in on Bitcoin. She makes the case that Bitcoin is an alternative to the U.S. dollar. I was impressed with her defense of Bitcoin from a libertarian perspective. Her perspective on the digital yuan in particular was on point. 
for me, this interview showed how much of a champion of libertarian values she is. And th this is the thing about a lot of uh, people that are defending Bitcoin. It, it, it isn't just about, um, you know, monetary innovation or whatever. It really is about values, uh, about like the government being able to print away our sa savings and um, essentially steal from us. Um, and having a good store of value, um, having fiscal um, sanity again is an important part uh, of why we Bitcoin. And, uh, you know, you, you clearly get that sense when you listen to that podcast. Another week, another DeFi disaster. This was the rug pull. Um, and of course, Mark Cuban's being kind of an idiot. He's like telling people that the, the stuff needs regulation. I mean, it, what, what can I tell you? He, he, he likes tokens. People that talk about tokens don't know anything else. Um, and they, you know, basically hype up random crap and uh, think the government should bail them out. <coughs> Cal Casa argues that Bitcoin and Ethiopia are inevitable. Um, and I, I, I can see it being especially useful in, uh, in parts, uh, you know, uh, of the world where um, the dollar uh, or, you know, some other currency is, uh, is much more dominant. Um, Bitcoin is going to be a lot more useful and a lot fairer. The Wall Street Journal, surprisingly, does a decent job talking about what El Salvador means. Um, and this is uh, this is strange for me, like reading sort of like a kind of net positive article for Bitcoin and in, in the mainstream. Uh, but, you know, um, once in a while they get it right. Mining equipment continues to f uh, continues its flow from China to the U.S. So a lot of mining equipment has been moving out of China uh, because of China's crackdown. Um, and I, I think a lot of it is finding its way to Texas, to Montreal, um, you know, places where you can get fairly cheap energy. Um, and, you know, I, I think this puts to death a lot of uh, mining debt spiral or like centralization in China stories. Michael Saylor bets even more on Bitcoin. Um, so he's uh, now got more than like a hundred thousand bitcoin which is a significant amount he has, he has like one out of every 210 uh bitcoin out there um good on him uh and you know given that these notes are like 10 years long or whatever i think he'll do perfectly fine on these i will be at the bitcoin standard conference on august 12th to 14th in mexico and bitblock boom in dallas on august 26th to 29th um and I'm running my programming blockchain seminar in Mexico, uh, Ensenada, on August 10th and 11th. This is a two-day seminar for programmers to learn about Bitcoin, and you can apply. Um, I also have some scholarships available for those that can't afford it. On this week's Bitcoin Fixes This, I talked to Alice Marie Johnson about criminal justice reform. Uh, we talked about nonviolent crime, mandatory minimums, Ross Ulbricht, and malicious prosecution um, so she uh, she is an extraordinary person and uh, you know she she made she's made a lot of difference uh, for a lot of people she managed to get pardons for a lot of people through Donald Trump and so on and she's not stopping and she really does want to um, believes that Ross Ulbricht doesn't uh, deserve the sort of very harsh sentence that he got I read through last week's newsletter on Twitter Spaces, um, and I will be posting this one very soon. Lastly, I was on Blunt Force, Tru For Blunt Force Truth and Kingdom REI to talk about the new book. Uh, my other books are uh, The Little Bitcoin Book and Programming Bitcoin. And of course, Unchained Capital is a sponsor of this newsletter. I joined as an advisor to be a part of a company that's enhancing the security for Bitcoin holders. If you need multi-sig collaborative custody or Bitcoin native financial services, learn more at unchained.com. Fiat Delenda, thank you so much. Uh, and I will stop this recording now.